let's try this again. So All right, um, I'm moving forward. Uh, please let me know if you uh, are not moving forward with me. Um, we're in the second slide here. It, it just gives a brief overview of where we're going. I already went through that, um, what fluids are going to be used, methods of treatment, indications treated, scientific findings, etc. Uh, so uh, are you guys seeing that slide now? Uh, hopefully. We're all moving in the right direction together. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> so, all right, excellent. All right, let's uh, let's keep moving then. Um, so we got saline, we got water, we have some other fluids. Uh, I mentioned ozone oils. Um, please uh, let me know if there's any other glitches in the system for any reason. Uh, so then we got to this slide um, called. Uh, and this is again a slide that shows us the uh, the different ways that we can use ozonated fluids. Um, first, again, over on the top left, we have our O2 runs to a generator, and then you're you're I'm sure aware of this, but uh, your ozone fluids uh, will be ozonated using traditionally pure oxygen that comes from an O2 cylinder and you run that into some sort of a colander, some sort of a container that will have the uh, fluid inside of it. Now, you can't just ozonate in, let's say, a cup or a glass. Um, it doesn't work that way because if you do that, ozone is going to escape into the air, and breathing large amounts of ozone can definitely be detrimental to your health. <laughs> so the best way to do this is to purchase a, uh, some sort of a device that has been designed to ozonate fluids. Um, we have one on our website at o3vets.com. Um, another type of device is pictured here. The one that we offer has a built-in destruct, and I'll show you what it looks like a little bit later, but you need something like that. So you're going to run the ozone into that container. Um, and then you'll have a bubbler, so the ozone will go down and it will be bubbled up through that saline or that water uh, for a period of time until it's uh, saturated. Um, and, and then from there, uh, you can either draw out of that uh, device into a syringe or into a bag or something like that, or you can just run it directly if you have a way to do that. Um, which we do on our device to the patient using a needle or um, something of that nature that you can just squirt right into the uh, area that needs to be um, treated. So that's one of the ways um, that it can be done. You can also, you'll see um, in this graphic, you can run ozone gas down into um, Oil. So what they do is, if you're going to insufflate, let's say the ears um, or uh, even uh, pulmonary uh, inhalation of ozone, again, you don't want to inhale just directly the gas, but if you bubble it through an oil, you can actually um, use that to insufflate ears or to inhale. I'm not real familiar. Uh, there's not, again, information really on inhaling and um, the ozone after it's gone through an oil. There's really just not a whole lot out there on that. Um, it can be done. Uh, but you can use that to moisten also um, the ozone gas, which tends to be pretty dry. Uh, so sometimes in particular situations, if you're, uh, let's say, doing the ears, um, you want to moisten prior to just putting ozone gas into uh, that area uh, because it could irritate it. Um, so sometimes they'll do that by running it first through the ear and then into the ears. Um, there's a particular device, it's really a, steth um, a stethoscope that's been modified to be used as a, a, an an application source for the ears, uh, so that's one way to use uh, um, to use it. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about today. I just wanted to show you uh, this 
this uh, slide here brief, but we're going to move on. Now, ozonated fluids, this is ozonated water that they're using to flush a wound, and I'll show you here. Hopefully, you can see the video um, for those of you who have uh, uh, are on your computer. Um, but basically, sometimes what we'll do is just draw up ozonated water um, into a syringe. And if you have, like, this was a bite wound on a dog, um, you can just use that to flush that wound out and and to irrigate it. Um, and what you're doing um, is, and, and there's a few different ways to do this. So I'll, I'll show you one more quick video here, I think. Um, that we have next, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, this is just another way to, again, to irrigate, to uh, treat a wound um, on the paw. So uh, this is actually, I believe, Margot's clinic. Yep. And uh, she has ozonated. Um, some water and just used an old saline bag to, you know, she's always reusing things. So to uh, be the container in which they're going to um, clean out this wound. And so that's another way um, that you can do that. Um, here's, here's another way, again, uh, a method, subcutaneous ozone. Uh, subcutaneous ozonated saline. So so what you'll do is you'll ozonate the fluid, and we're going to talk about how long and how you do that in a minute. Um, and then uh, in this particular case, there's an IV administration kit set that's connected directly to the device that holds the fluid. And all they do is run that directly to the patient. Um, and put it subcutaneously. And you can do that around a, a, a uh, let's say there's a tumor or, or uh, an abrasion or something um, uh, in, that's localized to that patient. And you can run it directly to that area. Or you can use this as a systemic way to treat the body um, as a whole. So there, you can you can do that either way really. Um, so we've got uh, again to to sum up here. You've got a couple different ways you can irrigate or or wash out a wound. Um, you can do it subcutaneously, and then there's actually a, a unique method, and this is not one I'm again extremely familiar with. Um, some people use uh, ozonated bath water. So there's a device um, that's sold. We don't sell it. But, uh, and what you do is you put that in the bottom of the bath, and then you, um, you run ozone gas directly into that bath water. Uh, and it would have to be at a very, very low concentration uh, because Obviously, you can't just allow that ozone that bubbles up through to escape into the air and then to fill the room. Um, so it would have to be, again, a very low concentration um, for that to function. Um, and again, uh, there's not a whole lot of research on this particular method of using the ozone bath, but it is done. I just want you to know that it's out there and it's, it's used, um, so you're aware of that. So, um, what are the different things that can be treated using an ozonated fluid? Well, infections is a really, really good one. Um, whether that's uh, optical or skin infections or bladder infections or ear infections, um, there's a lot of different infections that can be really successfully treated using ozonated fluids. Um, so that's really, really a, a good uh, option. Um, and hot spots um, is another uh, good uh, option for for ozonated uh, fluids uh, pre and post operation type of situations where you want to irrigate or um, just disinfect uh, the the operation area. Um, that's a really common. They do that a lot in Russia. There's a few studies I know that have come out of Russia um, in the human field uh, where they're using ozonated um, saline to do that. Um, systemic conditions you can you can treat. Uh, you know we use ozone a lot as an adjunctive therapy for for treating cancer or um, 
for treating t different types of systemic infections um, a lot of times. So when you put ozonated saline subcutaneously or even intravenously, um, you can you can treat systemic conditions as well. It's not just a localized infection or or something of that nature. Um, so it's really very versatile way to use this uh, this type of therapy. Um, so here's a hot spot that you can see right on the neck area. There uh, was this was a you know a, a really bad one and very very uncomfortable for the patient. Um, and they respond to ozonated uh, saline. So as that ozonated saline is flushed over the, the region there, it really helps to heal it and to oxygenate and to um, bring it back into balance. Uh, and so this is our patient, uh, again, a few days later after treating that with ozonated saline, just really running it right directly over the, um, the area, that hot spot. Um, and, and treating it. And that's a good, you know, we, we do, you can do this in the clinic, but we also sell some devices that are, that are really inexpensive that home homeowners, uh, pet owners can actually purchase or rent from you and then bring home and do something like this to their own pets. Um, that's another option, just something to keep in mind if you're interested in that. Um, so there's different ways. You can also use it here. Here's a picture of uh, flushing a uh, urinary catheterized animal, animal to uh, bathe the bladder. So, so what they'll do is they'll, they'll flush the bladder uh, actually with ozonated saline. Um, the, and, and again, it, that, that helps. So I, I believe in this particular case, what they did is they took a sample of the, uh, took the urine out and they were uh, um, acculturing that. Um, and after they took that out, they, they injected a, they'll inject ozonated saline directly into the bladder to cleanse it um, and to try to help that, that bladder to heal um, and get rid of the infection. Um, so here's a video. Uh, again, this one actually does have some audio, but I'm going to mute it because it's not really that helpful. Um, and uh, if, you, if you watch this, what they're doing is they're actually filling up, again, the bladder with ozonated saline. Um, and once that's filled up, now I'm going to skip forward here a little bit on this video uh, because I don't think we need to watch the bladder fill up necessarily all the way. Um, but again, they're, they're flushing it out. They're getting rid of toxins and infection. They're just helping make sure the healing process goes as quickly as possible. And what you're doing is you're bringing, you're flooding that area with oxygen as well. And then they're hitting the outside of it with uh, ozonated saline as well. Um, and we're going to see some studies in a, just a minute on, on how this type of a treatment can actually be very effective and very helpful. Um, it's ozone is one of the most powerful sterilizers in the world. So, and here they're showing you it's just running directly from the device to um, the the area where uh, they're disinfecting. So it's a very very potent sterilizer and can be very very helpful um, in these type of situations where you're doing operations. You um, want to bring healing. Uh, back to that area as quickly as possible uh, and minimize any risk of infections. And so that's what they're doing. So they fill it up with the saline and then they go ahead and they um, just drain that out. Um, and that's the process there. I'm going to skip to the next slide. This is a picture um, of a, uh, a dog who, who came into this particular clinic and they, uh, they figured this eye was gone. Um, they were going to remove it, uh, and then the, the owner brought their dog to, to this uh, integrative clinic, and um, they decided, hey, let's uh, let's hit with ozonated saline. Uh, what can you know? What can it hurt? <laughs> so, um, so they did, um, and so sort of over. I don't know how long uh, over the course of man. I don't know if it was three or four weeks, but it was a good period of time like that. Um, and uh, not this particular picture, but the whole case. And uh, so here's the next, you know, um, you can see a lot of the infection was healed up. You can see the mouth around, you know, around the mouth area too. There's just, uh, it's, it's healing up. Um, all they did 
was hit it with ozonated saline consist on a consistent basis over a period of time. And uh, you can see the healing process has really come along very nicely. And the final result is that the eye was completely restored. Uh, had vision again and uh, was able to be useful. And so you can see where um, it can be a very, very valuable tool in that type of a situation to cure, get rid of infections, uh, and to restore and heal areas of the body um, that otherwise wouldn't heal. Uh, let's get into studies and, and talking a little bit about dose as well, because that's where at the beginning of the, the um, lecture here, if you remember, I said controversial, but controversial use of ozonated fluids. And, and what I meant with that uh, will become apparent as we talk about this. Now, here's a study that was done. And, and uh, I don't want, th this particular study isn't as important as to the nature of what they were actually trying to do. They were really um, just looking for ways to measure um, with this particular study. Uh, but what I wanted to show you out of this was um, that the ozone concentration that's used was 4.6 micrograms per milliliter. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with how we measure ozone or not, but that's a very low concentration. Um, under 5 micrograms per milliliter, or here in the U.S., sometimes you'll hear gamma. So it was under 5 gamma, very low concentration. Uh, within the medical field, you'll see sometimes that people are using ozone concentrations up to, let's say, 80 micrograms per milliliter. Um, but what they've come to, uh, it's a little bit cloudy as to the final outcome, but uh, there are, there's literature and information out there that would that would say that if you are ozonating fluids, uh, not fluids in general, but saline in particular, uh, at high concentration levels, um, you can actually create uh, hypochloric acid. Um, and and uh, so what they do to to make sure that doesn't happen is ozonate saline at very low concentration levels. Um, this is literature and studies that have come out of Russia um, and Spain as well. They used to be completely against the use of ozonated saline uh, in in Spain. Now they've la loosened those. Um, their stance on that and are actually using it, um, but again at very low concentration levels, let's say five micrograms per milliliter or less, um, sometimes even two and three micrograms per milliliter is the amount, of the level that they're ozonating at. So really low. Um, it's controversial because here in the U.S., uh, the the, they don't really use it so much in the human field, but in the veterinary field, um, it's been very common to ozonate fluids at very high levels. Um, and uh, that's something we're moving away from <laughs> as uh, something that we're suggesting. We're saying, let's, uh, let's back off of that and let's ozonate um, at the generally accepted international standard of about 5 micrograms per, per milliliter or less. So very low concentration levels. And uh, uh, we just want to make sure that we aren't creating any of these toxic regions. Um, and at this level, you, you don't. So uh, that's what that's about. Um, here's, a, there, here's a study um, that shows, again, I just highlight some of the, uh, the highlights, I guess, um, in here. And, and basically, again, here they're, they're at four parts per million, which actually comes out to, again, four micrograms per milliliter. Um, so they tried it at two, and they tried it at four. They actually tried up here at 10. Um, and again, this is uh, externally. So they're using it for, um, for prior to eye surgery, right? And uh, and they say ozonated solution may be safe and useful antiseptic of the ocular surface prior to ophthalmic surgery. Um, so you can see that it actually fared better than the iodine solution that they were using, um, and uh, had better effect overall 
in, in that case. In, in macular degeneration, ozone therapy has been fantastic. It has done phenomenally well uh, as far as the results uh, that they've had with that. So um, in some of these particular situations, uh, eye surgery and that type of a thing, it can be a very, very useful tool. So you might want to consider that. Um, ozonated, I, I don't get into this. I don't know if you do dentistry, some of you, maybe. But uh, dentistry is another way where, place where they use lots of ozonated fluids, lots of ozonated water, obviously, to flush um, the area uh, as, they're, as they're doing um, the, the work on the mouth there. So that's another way. Here's, a, here's another study that shows um, the effect of ozonated sterile saline irrigation on the endometrium. Uh, and so the conclusion, as you can see down there below, is that sterile ozonated saline irrigation uh, has a significant favorable effect on various histological endometrial parameters. So if you can use ozonated saline, why not? It's going to only improve. It's going to only improve the outcome for you, uh, whether you're doing a surgery or whether you're treating a wound or um, whether you're, you know, you're, you're uh, dealing with um, some sort of uh, ear infection or eye infection or something of that nature, it's a really good natural way to treat, and to get healing, to get oxygen, um, to get good blood flow into those areas. Um, so why not, right? Uh, here's another one talking about irrigation of the abdominal cavity and the treatment of experimentally induced microbial peritonitis. Um, and what they find again here is that uh, as compared to controls, um, ozonated saline statistically proved the most effective irrigating solution for reducing abscess formation in survivors. Um, and so you see the effects over and over, the positive effects of ozone therapy and ozonated fluids. Um, I have a video here. I didn't have time. I thought of it after the fact. I was going to embed it into this PowerPoint. But if you go to o 3 vastcom um, you can write this down, or I will have this uh, recorded, hopefully, and up on the web um, in a day or two so that you can review it if you want to. But uh, if you go to o 3 vetscom which is our website uh, slash, backslash video, uh, we have a whole library of videos there, and one of those li videos shows you the Falcon H2O system, which is our fluid ozonator unit. Um, it's basically just, again, a colander that has a destruct connected, so it captures excess ozone and destroys it. Um, and this that video will show you uh, what I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> but the picture is worth a thousand words, so um, it might be just more useful to go check that out. But um, basically, what you're going to do is you hook up your ozone generator to this Falcon H2O unit, um, which is also used for saline. You don't just have to use it with H2O. <laughs> uh, and then um, that's that's our sealed ozone compatible to container. That's what it is. It has an integrated destruct. Um, and then if you're going to do water, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to fill it with water, fill it to the appropriate level, and then oz turn your ozone machine on and run it at the desired level. Again, we would say probably uh, if you're doing water, you can do it a lot higher because you're not going to create that hypochloric acid that you might with saline. Um, so you can you can actually ozonate at higher concentration levels, like r really high, <laughs> like 80 micrograms per milliliter. Um, and uh, you c water will saturate at uh, maybe around 30 micrograms per milliliter, and uh, so that'll be what you have. And you can use that again to to wash or flush areas. Um, people drink it as well. Um, there's really no studies on the effects of drinking ozonated water, but it's one of the ways that uh, you can get ozone to the body, so, so why not? I can't imagine um, it does any worse than some of the other methods of getting it into the tissue. We're really just trying to get it get into the tissue. So uh, you can 
ozonate for about 10 to 15 minutes um, before you start using it. That way it will be saturated. And then you want to use it within 45 minutes. Really 30 minutes is probably a good rule of thumb, but if you use it uh, within 45 minutes, you should be okay. It just Its half-life is... Uh, it's very reactive, so it it's going to it's not going to last very long on you, and 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 then what you would do is just repercolate. You know, we turn your ozone generator back on if it's been sitting there for a while, and just uh, reinfuse it with ozone. If you're doing saline, um, you're going to ozonate for again approximately five to ten minutes, actually, at five micrograms per milliliter or thereabouts before using it. Um, and then again, use it within probably about 45 minutes. So, and 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 quicker if you can. Um, this is a picture of the Falcon H2O system here. On the left side of this device, you have a Lurlock connection, and you connect this um, special ozone-resistant tubing to the to the Lurlock, and then you'll connect the other side up to your ozone generator, and then you can run your ozone right up through the middle of this thing and uh, ozonate your fluid, and then in the front you have a spigot, and we have a little um, hookup that we can hook an IV administration kit set right up to this spigot if you want, or you can hook a, a lure lock syringe or, or something like that up to it as well, so we have a little kit that you can adjust it with there. Um, uh, so that's, that's important. Um, it's ozone compatible. That's a really important aspect. You want to make sure that any anything you use is ozone compatible because there's certain materials that are going to deteriorate very quickly with ozone. Um, so you have to be very careful about that. A couple of the things that we provide uh, that you're not going to get at other companies is that we give uh, you customer support and we're veterinary specific. Uh, only company. Uh, only company um, in the U.S. at the very least that I'm aware of. Um, for sh only company in the U.S. for sure that is veterinary specific and uh, one of maybe a, just a couple in the world um, that would be veterinary specific with uh, ozone therapy. So that's a really important, I think, aspect because we can provide you with the information you need and the products you need. Um, so let's see. What do we got here? Yeah, so the, the final analysis, and we're getting down to the end here, um, we, I th we think results are really obviously very important. Um, we can prove scientifically and clinically that ozone therapy is going to work for you um, and that ozonated fluids are going to work. Um, and so we're certain of that. And with our products, um, particularly with our core products, with our ozone machine, and, and we also work in the ultraviolet um, blood irradiation field, um, we offer a six-month money-back guarantee. So if you do want anything uh, or need anything, um, we really offer a risk-free option. Um, it's really important uh, that you're confident in what you're using and, and that your client trusts you. <laughs> um, we know that you're gifted doctors, uh, those of you who are veterinarians on this call, um, but again, having the right tools is really, really important um, because it's only going to boost your confidence and your client's confidence when they see, hey, uh, they're healing my animal. <laughs> um, so those things are really important. And then um, we, we finally want to just mention satisfaction. I think that uh, when when you can leave the office and you leave the office feeling like, man, that was really a good day. I really, really am satisfied. I'm taking pride in what, what you've done. It's a really cool thing. Um, and we think ozone therapy and uh, ozonated fluids is one way to get you there. Um, so... Oh, anyways, uh, we want to just put it out there for you. We do have an upcoming training class in Columbus, Ohio. It's in conjunction with the HVMA conference. That's in just a couple of weeks, a little less than that even. Um, we only have a couple spots left, um, maybe two spots. So if you're interested in that, um, let us know right away. Oh. Don't leave yet either because I have an offer for you um, here, I think the next slide. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, anyways, so we'll have a training class. Um, 
we have our annual conference, which we're going to have in Colorado this year. Um, we have it in conjunction with doctors, dentists, veterinarians. So we have some veterinary specific lectures and training class and all that jazz, um, but it's really a one medicine conference and it's been really fantastic. Oxidative therapies, light therapies, currents, um, a lot, lots of different uh, integrative modalities that are taught there. And then you can always stop their website and sign up for a newsletter if you're interested in that. Um, let me go back because I want you See this slide? Okay, so we have in this bad picture. Um, this is the last minute, but uh, we have uh, a three pack um, of ozone oils that uh, usually sells for around twenty one dollars. Um, and we're going to give you this uh, code. It's just uh, there at the bottom of the screen. Sample pack. If you enter that tomorrow only into our uh, the coupon code at the checkout when you uh, purchase these, um, you will get uh, this sample pack for 10 bucks, and you can try them out. There's three different ozone oils, and you can use there, there are three different levels of concentration, so you can use those um, again to heal wounds. Uh, they're really good um, for that type of a thing. So if you're interested, um, stop by our website tomorrow and enter that code in uh, find the product enter that code if you need any help uh, you can email us but uh, th that is it for our presentation this evening um, does anybody have any questions um, I'm going to go ahead and let's see uh, okay if you have any questions type them into the chat box um, and otherwise I want to thank you very very much for for attending this webinar and for, for being a part of, of this. Um, and uh, we are going to have another webinar next month. Um, so look for that. We're going to have one every month um, moving forward. Uh, so you can always um, stop by our website to see what the next one will be or make sure you're on our um, email list so that you will get those uh, updates. Um, that is it, unless we have any questions. So I'll stay here for a minute and, and watch um, this to see if any questions come in. Uh, okay. Um, Joe asked a question here. If you send the ozonated liquid home with the client, does it need to be frozen since it's only good for 45 minutes? Uh, good question, Joe. Um, yeah, okay, so... Freezing ozonated fluids is not something that's done. Uh, I don't think, I am not certain if that is possible. If it's possible to freeze um, the ozonated fluids and to allow it to, to have it hold that concentration, it's something we could test, but it's not something I've ever heard done. Um, that would be possible option, uh, but again, I'm not real sure on that. Another way to do it, if you want to send, if you want them to have fluids at home, is really to, to have them buy um, one of our hummingbird units, which they can use then to ozonate their own fluids at home, and that's something they can purchase at the whole kit for under $700. Um, which, yeah, it's a, it's you know, it's an investment, but they can use it for their animals, and you didn't hear me say this, but some people use it for themselves, you know, obviously. So, um, Cheryl asks, uh, she says, anyways, Jill, let me know if you have any other question on that. Cheryl says, I had an ear turn red from ozonated olive oil, individual reaction. That's very possible. Some patients are just not going to react super well. Um, there are, there's the... This is a very rare case where we find that a patient is actually um, allergic to or has an, a sensitivity to ozone, and in those cases, they might not respond positively. Um, it also may be, Cheryl, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, some ozonated oils are ozonated to a very high level. Um, and uh, so you could actually have a reaction um, because of the fact that, uh, you know, and, and hopefully 
Um, this this is in our ozonated olive oil, but if it is, this isn't the problem. <laughs> but um, you can actually have the problem of having oils that are uh, holding too high of a value of ozone, and they will irritate the skin. Um, so that's another possibility uh, there. Um, but uh, there, we have a. I would say if there's a sensitivity possibly in that type of a situation, we have a really good ozonated cream that's that's not as strong. Um, it's called the uh, Ozonia Vat, and it's it's uh, specifically designed um, based on ozonated oil. But it's a really good cream to use in those types of situations. In fact, I would probably recommend the ozonated cream that we have. Um, really above any of the, the oils. Um, I just trust it more um, than I do. Not to say the oils aren't good as well, but I really think this cream has worked really well. So um, are there any other questions um, that anyone has? Just, um, okay, so what amount of time to ozonate years through water with the stethoscope and what gamma. So how long and at what concentration level should we treat, let's say, um, an ear infection or, or some sort of, you know, uh, whatever issue they're having with the ears? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so there's a couple different ways that you can treat the ears. and. Uh, yeah, you can use you can use the ozonated water um, to treat, and uh, if you're going to be doing that, um, y you really I I don't think it's probably the number one way to treat an ear infection. It um, it'll work, but it might be a little uncomfortable, and it might be hard to get them to stay still uh, if you're doing that. I would probably recommend using gas and bubbling it through ozonated olive oil or something like that, um, and then letting that run right into the ears, um, or use a, uh, um, a, the cream or the oil um, itself that's been ozonated. Um, but the gas at least won't be as much, you know, they're not going to uh, struggle as much um, if you use that as opposed to maybe an ozonated water. Um, uh, if you're going to use ozonated water, um, you can use a high concentration level um, because, again, we, we're we're looking to kill. The higher the concentration level, the the more it's going to disinfect. Um, the lower the concentration, um, the more time it's going to take to disinfect. And uh, they they really recommend that if you're looking to heal um, quickly. Uh, if you're looking to disinfect, to use that high level, but if you're looking to heal, to granulate a wound, to um, to actually, you're past really the disinfecting uh, um, stage of healing, that you want to lower the concentration level anyway. Um, and that's when we can start using something more around the 10 microgram per milliliter for using water area. Um, so you'll... you'll you'll ozonate at, you know, 10 to 15 micrograms per milliliter for 10 minutes, let's say. Um, but uh, that would be more or less uh, the recommendations I would have for treating an ear infection. Uh, hopefully that's, that's helpful. Any, are there any other questions? Or maybe I didn't answer your question completely. So if I didn't, then you can uh, just ask me. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm a little dense. OK. Well, we have hit our time limit. Um, thank you again for your time. And have a great evening. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you at the HPMA conference or at our next webinar. Have a good evening. Thank you.